Ozala was a small village, quiet and peaceful, hidden in the hills of the ancient kingdoms. The people there lived simple lives, farming, fetching waters and sitting together in the evening to gist. Everybody knew everybody in Ozala and news travelled fast. But lately, fear had settled over the village. For some months now, young women were being found dead, one after the other. Nobody knew what was killing them. But one thing was obvious, the same strange occurrence. Their left breast is always missing and their body as white as though their blood was drained from their body before death. But nobody could say for sure. No one had ever seen any wild animal in their village. And why does it happen to only their young beautiful maiden in the land? It was as if the death were happening in secret. And that made it even more frightening. The fact that nobody heard any scream or any sign made the villagers more worried and scared. The village chief, Chief Uzo, sent hunters into the bush to find the beast or any animals. They came back empty-handed and the death continued. The fear only grew stronger. Mothers started warning their daughters not to move around at night. Even in the daytime, women no longer feel safe. The once lively village became quiet and people didn't trust as easily as before. In the midst of this chaos was one person who didn't seem to care about all the fear. His name was Chidi. He was a womanizer and if you ask any woman in Ozala who the finest man in the village was, the answer was always Chidi. Tall with a muscular body that showed all the hard work he did as a bodybuilder. His skin was smooth and dark and his eyes shone like he was always knew something you didn't. His smile alone was enough to make a woman weak. Chidi had the kind of charm that made women forgot their fears when he walked through the village. The women would giggle and blush hoping he would look their way. And when he did, it felt like the sun was shining only on them and they immediately get their undies wet because of Chidi's gaze. Chidi knew how to use his looks and sweet words. It wasn't just his fine face, it was the way he spoke, the way he moved and the way he always seemed to be in control. And also, you can visibly see the size of his manhood visible under his clothes. That alone got the women, both young and old, fantasizing about him. But behind all those charm and beauty, Chidi carried a dangerous secret. He didn't care about the fear in the village. He didn't worry about the death either. He went about his day as if all was well. Chidi knew he was handsome and he didn't hide it. He walked around the village with confidence, his head held high and his eyes always searching for his next catch. The women of Ozala were drawn to him like ants to sugar, whether at the village well, the market or at the farm. As long as Chidi was nearby, the women couldn't take their eyes off his transparent huge manhood, which makes them wet instantly. Also, Chidi had a way of talking that made any woman feel special. Chidi took his time slowly, drawing them in, making them trust him, making them want him. And once he had her yearning for him, he would take her to his hut. At the edge of the village, away from prying eyes of the villagers, there, under the soft glow of the moon, Chidi would work his magic. 
He was gentle, patient, making each woman feel like she was the most important person in the whole wide world. But when the night grew darker, Chidi would always ask the same strange question. Do you know the difference between a man's manhood and a two-headed snake? The women never knew what to say. They would laugh thinking it was a joke. Maybe Chidi was comparing his manhood to a powerful snake. But before they could answer, the woman would feel uneasy like something was about to happen. And that's when it did happen. Something would shift in the room as if they were spinning. And before they would react, they would feel a cold, smooth touch on their skin. A snake, dark and dangerous with two heads, would slip out of Chady's trouser. The women always froze in fear, too strong to scream or run. The snake would wrap itself around them slowly, as if toying with its prey. Then with a quick strike, one of the head would yank off the left breast, while the other head sucked all the blood from the wounds of the breast, making them go white immediately before coiling back into Chidi's trousers. Chidi was left standing over their lifeless bodies, his face expressionless. By morning, the woman's body would be found in the village square, cold, white, with their left breast missing. The villagers would gather around, shaking their head, wondering what was going on. What kind of beast could do such a thing? No one ever suspected that a snake was responsible. Neither did anyone suspect the jolly good fellow Chidi, who was everyone's sweetheart and dream man. Each time another woman died, the fear in the village grew, but Chidi didn't care. He continued his life as if nothing was happening. The women still blush and giggle when he walked by, completely unaware of the danger that locked beneath him his good looks and sweet words. Life in Ozala went on, even with the fear hanging over the village. The women were more cautious, especially at night. But the daily routine of fetching water, farming and trading continued. Every time a woman died, people would mourn, but nobody had any answers. The village chief also tried to keep the people calm, but deep down, Everyone knew that something was wrong. Chidi's latest kill was Urema, a beautiful young woman and the only child of a widow in the village. Her mother cried as she saw the lifeless and unrecognizable body of her only child laying on the ground at the village square. Her heart was shattered as she mourned for her only child. She was so heartbroken that she went to an abandoned river in the village and cried to the river goddess for vengeance. She lay at the shores of the river and cried till nightfall before she staggered home in tears. Despite the village chief priest's prayers and libations, there was no answer to their prayers. Then one day, a strange face arrived at the village a woman named Omalecha. She was different from the other women in Ozala. Tall and graceful, with her skin that shone like polished wood. Omalecha carried herself with confidence. Her beauty wasn't just in her face or body, but in the way she moved, as if she wasn't bothered by anything around her. She had come to visit her aunt who lived on the edge of the village and almost immediately she caught Chidi's attention. Chidi noticed Omalecha the first time he saw her at the well, unlike the other women who couldn't help but stare at him or blush when he passed. 
Omalicha didn't seem impressed. She didn't giggle. She didn't stare. She didn't even smile at him. Instead, she looked straight past him. Her face calm, like she was in control of everything. This intrigued Chidi. He wasn't used to being ignored. And Omalicha's calmness felt like a challenge to him. He had always been able to win over any woman he wanted and he wasn't about to let Omalicha be the first to resist him. From that moment, Chidi decided he had to have her in his bed no matter what. Chidi began to watch Omalicha more closely. He noticed that she was always polite but never too friendly. She spoke kindly to people but she never allowed anyone to get too close to her. This only made Chidi go crazy and wanted her more. He wasn't just interested in her beauty. He was fascinated by her mystery, by her strength. The more he watched, the more determined he became. Chidi wasn't used to falling and he wasn't able to start now. He began to follow her around looking for opportunities to speak with her, to charm her like he had done with so many others. But each time he approached her, Omalicha kept her distance as if she knew something he didn't. One afternoon, Chidi found his chance. Omalicha was at the river, filling her water pot. And there yeah, we are fewer people around. Chidi walked up to her, his usual confident smile on his face. Omalicha, he said smoothly, his voice deep and sweet like honey. Let me help you carry that. Omalicha glanced at him, her face expressionless. She didn't look impressed by his looks or his charms. And this only made Chidi more eager. He waited for her to giggle or blush like the others. But instead, she simply nodded her head. If you insist you want to assist me, then fine. She said calmly, stepping back to let him take the water pot. Chidi felt a small victory. He lifted the water pot easily and placed it on his head, making sure to show off his strength as they walked to her auntie's house. Chidi tried to make small talks, but Omalicha remained quiet. She answered his question politely, but didn't give him any more than necessary. This wasn't what Chidi was used to, but he told himself it was only a matter of time before she fell for him. All the women eventually did. She is only playing hard to get. He just had to work a little harder with this one. After that day at the well, Chidi couldn't get Omalicha out of his mind. She wasn't like the other women of Ozala. Most of them would have melted under his smile. Omalicha, she was different. The more distant she remained, the more obsessed Chidi became. He wasn't used to this. He wasn't used to a woman not giving him attention. It was new. It was frustrating and it made him want her even more. Day after day, Chidi watched her when she fetched water and when she walked through the market, even when she visited the farm with her aunt. Now, Chidi knew that Omalicha often visiting her auntie's small farm, just outside the village, where they grew yams and vegetables. So he decided to wait for her there. It was a warm evening and the sun was beginning to set, casting a soft orange glow over the fields. He leaned against a tree, his arms crossed over his chest, his eyes focused on the path leading to the farm. Finally, he saw Omalicha walking slowly, her steps steady and graceful. She was carrying a basket of yam on her head, her back straight, her face calm as usual as she approached. Chidi stepped forward, blocking her path. Omalicha, he said, his voice deep and smooth. You have been avoiding me, Omalicha. Omalicha raised an eyebrow and looked up at him, not breaking her calm expression. 
I have been busy. I have been doing no such thing, Chidi. I have just been busy. Her response irritated him. Chidi wasn't used to being brushed off like this. He was used to women being excited to see him, not acting like he didn't matter. But he forced a smile, trying to keep his cool. You're always so serious, he said, taking a step closer. Why don't you let me walk with you? We could get to know each other better, you know? Malicha gave him a long look, her face still unreadable for a moment. Chidi thought she might actually agree. But then she shook her head, stepping around him. I am not interested, Chidi, she said simply. Chidi stood there stone. He wasn't sure if he was more shocked or angry. How could she just walk away from him like that? Nobody had ever said no to him like this before. His pride felt bruised. But more than that, his obsession with Omalecha grew even stronger. He couldn't let her slip away so easily. No, she would be his no matter what it took him. As Omalecha walked away, Chidi's eyes darkened. He made a promise to himself right there. He would have her and would enjoy killing her slowly. He knew he had to change his approach to win her over. This time, he decided to be patient, to play the long game. Instead of showering her with attention like before, Chidi pulled back. He stopped following her around and barely spoke to her when they crossed paths. It didn't take long for Omalecha to notice the change. She had expected him to keep trying, but now he seemed distant, almost uninterested. The shift in Chidi's behavior worked. After days of watching him from a distance, Omalicha became curious and approached him one evening as he sat outside his hut sharpening his knife. You have been quiet lately, she remarked, her tone calm but curious. Chidi simply nodded his head, keeping his answers short, and his face expressionless. He knew this would draw her in. After a few moments of silence, Chidi suggested a walk, and Omalicha agreed, her guard lowering slightly as they walked. Chidi kept the conversation light, just enough to keep her comfortable. He wanted her to believe that he was a changed man, and that he was more than the charming, attention-seeking womanizer she had assumed. And slowly, it seemed to work. Chidi had played his cards right, and now Omalich's defense were lowering. She no longer looked at him with suspicion, and her once-guarded responses softened. Chidi could sense that the moment he had been waiting for was near. His patience had paid off. One evening, as the sun was setting over the village, Chidi decided it was time. He invited Omalicha to his hut, saying they could share a quiet evening together. Omalicha, now more comfortable around him, agreed. The air was still and the village seemed almost too quiet as they made their way to his hut on the outskirts of Azala. Inside the hut, flickering light from a small oil lamp cast soft shadows on the walls. Chidi offered her a seat and poured her some palm wine. His voice calm and soothing as they talked. Omalcha sipped the palm wine slowly, her eyes watching him carefully, but no longer with the sharpness of before. She did smile inwardly, knowing that the moment was finally his. The moment he had waited for so long. He moved closer, gently brushing his fingers against hers, and began to speak in that low, seductive voice he was known for. Omalicha, he said softly, 
I have been thinking about you. You are different from the others, strong and independent. Omalicha smiled faintly, still relaxed, but Chidi could see the, the effect his words were having. He leaned a little closer, his voice now almost a whisper. Do you know the difference between a man's manhood and a two-headed snake? Omalicha's brows furrowed slightly, confused by the sudden question. She opened her mouth to respond, but before she could say anything, Chidi clapped his hands three times, filling the room with an airy, deafening sound. Omalicha shifted in her seat, suddenly uneasy, but it was too late. From the shadows, a dark shape began to form. Omalicha's eyes widened as she saw it. A two-headed snake, long and menacing, sliding out from Chidi's trouser. The cold, smooth scales glistening in the dim light as the creature coiled around her. Chidi watched his face expressionless as the snake prepared to deliver its deadly attack on Omalecha. But something was different. Something was different this time around. Omalicha didn't seem terrified like the other girls. She lifted up her hands and from nowhere, Chidi's hut was filled with water. Chidi's eyes widened in shock as the snakes froze mid-strike. It hesitated in confusion. Its eyes now locked on Omalicha who was dancing to an unknown sound with her eyes closed. Chidi was shocked as he managed to ask, Who, who are you, Omalecha? Then suddenly her eyes flicked open. Her eyes shone with so much light that it made the snake slowly turn away from her and slithered back towards Chidi. Chidi stumbled backward fear flashing across his face for the first time the snakes now under omalicha's control coiled around him tightening its grip chidi gasped who who are you how how did you how did you do it he muttered under his breath his voice barely a whisper omalicha's face was calm her eyes cold and steady you are not the only one who knows about snakes or how to control snakes. It is time you paid for your wicked act against my people. I heard their cry and I came. Before Chidi could respond, the snake struck, sinking its fangs into his neck. The venom sprayed him quickly, paralyzing him almost instantly. His body convulsed, his breath shallow as the life drained out of him. Omalicha stood over him, her expression unreadable. Then the cock crow. Omalicha took the body to the village square. By morning, the village of Ozal was buzzing with whispers. The villagers gathered in the square, their faces filled with shock and disbelief. Chidi, the man they had all admired, his lifeless in the middle of the village square, his body pale and still beside him, the two-headed snake, his deadly secret lying coiled, its head severed and lifeless. Omalicha stood before the villagers, her face calm but her heart heavy. She had done what she came to do to bring an end to the terror that has haunted the women of Ozala kingdom for so long. Omalicha was not actually who the villagers thought she was. She was the river goddess of the abandoned river in Ozala. The river where the widow whom her daughter was killed had cried to for vengeance. She listened to the cries of the widow and came in human form to bring justice to this land. 
Chidi was a powerful creature of magic and power. Omalicha knew that it wouldn't be very easy to eliminate him. So her acting hard to get was part of the plan to divert Chidi's attention from who she really was. The villagers were silent as she spoke, her voice steady and clear. I am not just an ordinary visitor, she said, her eyes scanning the crowd. I am Nemiri. I heard the cries of the widow whose only child was murdered by this wicked man to put an end to the killings. Chidi, with all his charms and good looks, was not what he seemed. He was the cause of all the death in the village. He uses a very dark and powerful magic, his snake manhood hidden inside him to seduce and kill women. The villagers were stunned. They had never suspected Chidi, the most handsome, charming builder, who seemed perfect in every way of being the source of so much pain and misery. For years, he had lived among them gaining their trust all while hiding the dark truth behind his smile they had been blinded by his charms by his fine looks never imagining that he was a monster in disguise murmurs of disbelief spread through the crowd and some of the women who had once giggled and blushed in his presence now stood in silence their faces pale with shock others bowed their heads in shame realizing how close they had come to falling victim to his deadly seduction but now the truth was clear Chidi's reign of terror had come to an end and the villagers was free from the darkness that had plagued it for so long years passed and the story of chidi and his snake manhood became a legend in ozala Mothers would tell the tale to their daughters, warning them of the dangers of falling for a man's charm without knowing his heart. The tale of Chidi became a lesson for all to remind them that not everything beautiful is good and that sometimes dangers hide behind the sweetest smile. The villagers started visiting the abandoned river again in honor of Nemiri. The river became one of honor throughout Ozala Kingdom. She was spoken of with reverence, her bravery and wisdom celebrated by the people. Ozala thrived once again. The women were safe. The fear that had gripped the village for so long finally lifted. Life returned to normal and the people of Ozala found peace. But the lessons of the past was never forgotten. As for Chidi's name, his name was forgotten, buried in the dust of history. No one spoke of him anymore, except as a warning to those who might be tempted to use charm and deceit for evil or to sell their soul to the devil. The villagers would remember the darkness he brought, but they will honor his memory. If not for anything, but for the good side of him. Be careful of the people you mingle with and the people you laugh with and reveal your secret to because not everyone that laughs with you has a good intentions for you. Some have hidden agendas and ulterior motives towards you. I hope you have learned something from this beautiful story. Remember to like, subscribe and share Stay safe out there and be prayerful.